What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today is the third video in our Microscopy for Mycology video series. So if you want to go back and watch the first two, check out our playlist. Today we are going to talk about microscopy or microscope maintenance. So this is very important. If you're purchasing your own microscope, it does require some delicate maintenance to make it work correctly. I think one of the biggest problems that I see is that people don't care for, for their microscopes and then they get turned off really easily when it's pretty simple. You know, you just have to keep it clean and follow some rules and you'll have a really good time using your microscope. The first storage maintenance or the first maintenance procedure that you should always follow is proper storage. So this one comes with this little plastic bag or cover, and it's often a, a dust resistant cover. And the purpose of that is to prevent dust from getting into the ocular lens like this one over here. So this is a microscope that I borrowed from my friend Zach, and it comes with a beautiful case, but it looks like it was slightly neglected. But that's okay, I'll show you how to clean out those objectives and store it properly for next time. Another important factor about storing microscopes, especially on a mushroom farm or in mycology or in an environmental lab, for instance, is that you want to make sure that you're storing your microscope in a relatively dry room and a relatively warm or room temperature room and what this does is it prevents condensation from getting inside your ocular or your objective lens so it's not a good idea to store your microscope right next to your fruiting chamber or you know outside in your garage because those temperature swings and the humidity can get inside the components and cause a lot of issues so that's one thing I wanted to point out, especially since a lot of you guys will be using this on a mushroom farm. It's important to have a designated area. Um, this is in my studio. It's uh, 66 degrees in here and it's really dry, especially in Colorado. So I don't have to worry too much about water damage, but it can happen. The next maintenance or I guess critical procedure that you want to do is proper handling you know, it's always important to carry your microscope with one hand on the arm and the other hand on the base. And then this way you have a really good handle of your microscope and it will be really unlikely for you to drop it. Sometimes I see people grabbing them by the head of the microscope and this stereo microscope, for instance, the head comes right off. So that's not the proper way. You want to grab it at the arm and hold it at the base whenever you're moving your microscope. And also you wanna keep it upright. It's not good to tip your microscope because these objective lenses just slide in and out. So if it's not upright, your objectives are gonna slip out and hit the ground. And I've done that before and it really sucks, um, especially if it's your only objective lens. So that's a really solid tip that will hopefully save a lot of you guys from a headache. Proper handling we talked about, uh, we talked about proper storage. So proper use is the next important aspect of maintaining your microscope. So for instance, when you have a compound microscope, you are going to want to use glass slides. So I know that it's really tempting to kind of force in this Petri dish onto the stage of your compound scope, but it's not appropriate the the objective lenses are designed to be maybe a millimeter or two millimeters away from the surface of the slide so these ones you can buy the concave slides if you want to observe a wet sample but i i will go over sample prep in another video but it's just important to use the proper slide for the proper microscope now this um Stereo microscope is designed to be able to use petri dishes. You can look at mycelium growing on auger. You can throw a whole mushroom on top of this stage here and it can, you know, still function properly.
But that's one thing I wanted to point out between the compound and the stereoscope is just use the proper sample or the proper slide. Okay, so the next tip is going to be um, with focusing. So it doesn't really apply as much for the stereoscope because it only has a coarse focus. But when you're focusing in on a sample, always start with the coarse adjustment until you're pretty close to having your sample in focus and then use the fine adjustment. So this will prevent you from from focusing and moving that objective into the slide because you'll have a really good overview of how focused you are. That being said, don't just ram it into there until you're into focus, but carefully use the course adjustment knob to bring your sample into kind of a close range and then use the fine adjustment to finish off focusing your sample. And you know, that's gonna save you a lot of cleaning because oftentimes if you get right in there and you think, oh, well, it was focused from my last sample. I'll just use this fine adjustment and then you'll hit your sample and you'll have to clean your lens. So I've done that hundreds of times before and I feel like it's my duty to tell you guys, make sure that you're careful when you're focusing your sample in so that you don't hit the lens into your sample. If you do get your lens dirty, it's not the end of the world. We have what are called Kimtech wipes I highly recommend getting these. So don't use a tissue to clean your lens because those little particles will come off and it will make it worse than what it was before. But these Kimtech wipes are specifically designed to clean microscope lenses or um, eyeglasses or anything that is very delicate, like a scope or a binoculars. Um, so make sure you get yourself some Kim wipes I like to use isopropyl 70% just because I have tons of it lying around, but also it evaporates quickly so it won't enter the system of your microscope. So um, I'll show you guys how I clean off this ocular lens. This one was a little dusty um, from when I received it, and I just want to make sure that I give it back to Zach in tip-top shape. So. I'll just simply take one of these Kim wipes. It looks just like a tissue, but they don't have particles on them um, with how they're manufactured or something. They're designed specifically for microscopes, essentially. So I'll just put a little bit of isopropyl on there. And then you can see it's a little dusty. So I'll just carefully take my Kim wipe and go in a circular motion. And there you go. Perfect. So if your ocular lens happens to rub on your sample, you can do the same thing. So I would use a fresh Kim wipe. Whoop. Fresh Kim wipe here. And then I'll simply move that ocular um, until it's easily accessible. And then go in a circular motion until it's clean. And then you can look at it under the objective. And that one's not lined up. But you should be able to see clearly through to the light source. So another area that often gets dirty is the uh, the magnifier under the stage. So you can clean that with a Kim wipe as well. Um, sometimes it gets dusty and then that could be confusing because you think it's an artifact on the slide, but it's actually just on the light bulb or that little magnifier. Okay, so we talked about how to clean the lenses. Um, another really important thing to avoid is do not use the oil immersion unless you're using the oil immersion lens. So that lens has a special concave um, glass fitting where it will take that oil bubble and then it will create almost like a uh, its own oil lens so that it captures more light and it brightens up 
that really fine magnification. Now, if you happen to use this by accident on, let's say, your 10x ocular or um, your 10x objective, then it's going to cause a lot of problems. Um, so it's better to avoid putting your oil on any other lens. And if you do have to clean it, I recommend unscrewing that lens. Um, you can soak it in some ISO or just really clean it off good with a Kim wipe. But that's a really good way to ruin a microscope is to use the oil on a different lens. It's not going to destroy your microscope. It's just going to be really annoying to clean it. Um, I've done that before, so I'm just saying it out of experience. We talked about Kim wipes. We talked about how to properly handle. We talked about storage. Um, another th important thing is that if you do have a problem with your microscope, I recommend calling a professional to um, do any hardcore maintenance other than just cleaning because there are very fine, sensitive tunes, especially with these objective lenses, that a professional will be able to calibrate your microscope. So usually it will cost $100 or $200 for someone to come and maintain your microscope. If you don't have a super fancy one, um, it might be worth investing in a new scope. These AM scopes are pretty cheap, and they're really you know, top-notch these days, especially the ones with the cameras. When in doubt, hire it out. That's all. That's what I always say. Okay, so we talked about microscope maintenance. Um, the next videos, I'm going to talk about slide prep and some different observ observation techniques. Uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to our channel if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. If you're interested in living mycelium cultures, check out our Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi. Uh, we got a whole bunch of new strains up there. That I'm really excited about and if you're interested in more mycology videos or mushroom farming videos subscribe to our channel give us a thumbs up and until next time much love <laughs>